I did my PhD at the University of Alberta in an area called sports psychology that really didn't exist at that time. Uh, so it was sort of created. So as a result, I did all of my courses in psychology or ed psychology. You know, people tend to associate psychology with you've got a real problem, you've got a real issue. Whereas sports psychology went to the other end of the continuum and said, what do exceptional people do on the inside that makes them so darn exceptional on the outside? And, and those skills, of course, are all about performance enhancement, getting better at things. And that's what I was interested in. I lived in the city of Toronto. There wasn't really anybody else in the area doing any work in sports psychology. And because it is the biggest city in the country, there were a lot of athletes, particularly figure skaters at that time, uh, because there were national camps here for figure skaters at that time. They were all in and around this area. Uh, I started getting calls to work with these athletes. Well, the Calgary Olympics were something else. Of course, first of all, it's in the country I live in. It's in Canada. Uh, secondly, when I arrived at the Olympics, I had 160 some requests for media interviews because sports psychology was so new, relatively speaking, very, very new. Uh, I didn't do any of the interviews because that's not what I was there to do. I was there to support the athletes in helping them achieve their best performance. Um, but that led to obviously a lot of publicity around the area of sports psychology and, and a better understanding of it. You know, it's, it's surprising for me at least, for someone who grew up in a little mining town in northern Quebec, to have attended six Olympic Games, the seventh will be Vancouver for me, and not only to have attended the Games, but for every Olympic Games since 1984, I have prepared athletes. And of course, for someone who loves sport as I do, it's been a marvelous experience. I mean, the wonderful thing about the Olympic Games is that they're the only event I've ever been to that lives up to its billing. Like, it's just as big as people say it is, and it's just as exciting. Business got interested, and I got a lot of calls to start to speak in corporate setting, and a man named Don Nightingale came out from Queen's University School of Business to hear me 15 years ago, and said, we want this as part of how we educate uh, executives who come back to take executive development programs at Queen's University, and 15 years ago, we started including initially all of the inside edge mental fitness stuff, and then shifted over to the coaching stuff uh, about eight or nine years ago. And so we've been highly involved in the education in the corporate setting ever since. Right now, of course, the preparation is for 2010 and the Vancouver Olympics. Um, I have the great joy of working with the women's Olympic hockey team. Uh, that's very time consuming because we have training camps, we have events we go to in Finland, for example, where you're gone for three or four weeks sometimes. But the majority of my time, what am I doing? I'm teaching in corporate North America and Europe and Asia and, you know, South America recently. Uh, and I enjoy that a lot because that's just as exciting for me. And, you know, it's been a wonderful thing developing gray hair because now people think I have some wisdom about me.